Hey, what's up everyone? It's Andrew from BNH. I've been out here for the last couple of days at the 2025 NAB show, checking out what's new in the audio verse. Let's go and take a look. So I made my way over to the Deity booth and they are showcasing a brand new product. This is an all digital wideband IFB solution the DIFB. It's a part of the Theos family. And uh, this is geared, of course, primarily for TV production or news, where you need to be able to communicate with a reporter or talent or other crew. The one cool thing about the DIFB is that it is ultra wideband, which means that it's capable of broadcasting anywhere between 550 megahertz and 960 megahertz. So that's a huge range and it will tune itself to be legal in the region that you're operating it in according to the GPS on your phone. Uh, Deity calls that their global one band technology. Now it's also Bluetooth capable. Uh, you can pair up to 48 of these to a phone to deploy not only firmware updates, but also deploy your frequency coordination. There is also a library that holds up to 20 frequencies so you can quickly switch between them if needed. And just to give you an idea of the range, uh, the Deity guys have told me that they're testing this out here at the show. They found an open frequency block and they're broadcasting using 20 milliwatts of power on an antenna here and they're getting about a 400 foot range, which is pretty impressive inside of uh, a dense RF environment that we're experiencing here at the NAB show. So uh, definitely something to check out if you're looking for an interruptible fallback solution. And uh, well, one other thing is that the battery life on this unit is up to 17 hours. So keep that in mind too, and we'll see what else we can find. DPA have just announced their N-Series wireless. And you might be thinking, well, I know DPA for their microphones, but this seems a little interesting that they're getting into the wireless market. But uh, the story behind the N-Series is that DPA wanted to develop a system that essentially was worthy of the DPA sound. So uh, that means that a lot of thought has gone into the internal design of the preamp and the analog to digital conversion. This is an all in-house designed system. And from the radio point of view, it is a true diversity system. So you'll notice that on the unit here, it has two antennas. So that means it's got two radios. It's not antenna switching from one side to the other, like some other systems are on the market. So you're getting that true diversity technology. It's a wideband system. The receiver is capable of operating between 470 megahertz and 870 megahertz of course dependent upon the region that you're in and then you will be having to buy the uh, transmitter that is appropriate for the region that you're in also and speaking of transmitters there are both a body pack and a handheld option uh, if you're looking to go handheld you can have your choice of capsules uh, you could purchase the transmitter with the 2024 capsule, the 2028 capsule, or the defector capsule. And the transmitter is also compatible with the most common thread that's out there for interchanging other capsules. So if there is a capsule from another brand uh, that you prefer, you can use that as well. The handheld transmitter is camera ready, meaning that it doesn't have any flashing lights or uh, a screen on there to distract. Um, the screen actually tucks away into the bottom of the uh, transmitter, which is a super cool feature and in terms of the body pack transmitter it's available in two versions uh, depending on the connector so there's DPA's proprietary micro lock connector or you could elect to get a standard limo connector on there as well the n-series receiver is capable of handling the signal from two transmitters so you get two channels of audio in the 1U rack mount receiver. And in terms of outputs, there are two versions available. There's one that's Dante only, and then there's another that's Dante and analog out. The DPA controller software is used to handle all of the configuration, including frequency allocation and frequency management, but you can also have full control on the unit itself using the encoder and the screen. So we're gonna keep moving through the show and see what else we can find now. Sound devices are showing some beta firmware that I'm told is going to be released very shortly. Uh, this is going to bring some different functionality to a couple of different products in their lineup, starting out with the CL16, which is the control surface that can be used with any 8 series recorder. This new release is going to bring a waveform display that can be shown at the top of the screen on the CL16. The waveform display is really handy for playback, 
especially if you're on set or on location and say the director wants to know if there was a clean audio take or if perhaps there was a dropout in a section, you can easily navigate to a particular part of the waveform and assign cue points and jump between them. Because you can color code the channels on the display, that means that also the waveforms are color coded, which is really handy if you say you have four audio feeds from four different actors, you can see uh, who's talking when and easily navigate to those sections too. And you can also choose between a couple of different waveform types. So if you prefer using a signed waveform or a rectified waveform, you can select that. You can also filter which channel waveforms you want to see so that you're not actually being overwhelmed by looking at uh, the 36 possible waveforms that you could see. And next up are the firmware updates for the Astral wireless ecosystem. This includes the Super Nexus and the Nexus receivers, as well as the Astral uh, transmitters. Of course, that includes the new handheld Astral transmitter. And in terms of the transmitters, namely those that have the control button on them, so that would be the A20HH model and the A20TX belt pack. And the control button on these transmitters with this new firmware will be able to trigger a macro on any quantum or SD Digico console. And that macro can control basically any function on any of those consoles. Um, you might be thinking, wow, that sounds kind of dangerous, but there are some practical applications for that, say if you wanted to trigger a talkback using that button, or if you wanted to trigger a lighting change or something, uh, a scene change, it's possible now for uh, the presenter or the entertainer to do that. And in terms of the receivers, the number of MADI or Dante outputs has been doubled now. So for the Super Nexus, that means you're gonna get 64 possible outputs. And for the Nexus, you're gonna get 32 possibly. And if you're a user that uses auto assign for frequency coordination, you're gonna be really excited with this update because you're now gonna have the ability to choose which channels you want the auto assign feature to affect. So let's keep wondering and see what else we can find. The Waves LV1 platform has been around for about seven years or so, and it's a very robust platform that has a lot of options when it comes to putting a system together, uh, which could in some ways be considered perhaps a little overwhelming. So I know it's not new for NAB 2025, but it's been out only a couple of months and I had a chance to look at it here and that's the Waves LV1 Classic. And this form factor simplifies the system a little bit and takes some of the guesswork out of getting set up. At the heart of the LV1 is a dual 32-bit precision mix engine. And uh, this console can operate at sample rates of 44.1, 48, 88.2 and 96 kilohertz. There are 64 channels that can be mono or stereo, uh, which means that if you want to have stereo channels, you don't actually have to sacrifice your channel count. You just got to make sure you have enough inputs to be able to support that. And then there are 44 mix buses in total. There are eight mix groups, 24 aux sends, which can be mono or stereo as well. There's eight matrices, 16 DCAs, left, center, right, main, and then talk back. And moving on to the surface, there are 16 plus one 100 millimeter Alps motorized faders. Now these are console faders, not what you'd expect to find on a controller. And the console is very ergonomic. There are encoders atop each channel that have three modes. And then you have a bunch of buttons that can select different layers. It's very flexible in the operation. And between the touchscreen, the faders and the encoders, it offers multiple ways to accomplish tasks. In addition to the eight standard layers, there are also eight custom layers that allow you to configure the console however you'd like. So if you wanted to have uh, on one layer, uh, several DCAs on one side and then some money channels, or if you wanted to have one channel that was the same on every layer uh, that you needed to be hands-on with, you can do that. And on the rear, there's an HDMI output where you can add an additional touchscreen, as well as up to three additional fader banks to give you a total of 48 plus three faders and 48 plus three encoders. Moving on to the rear panel, you'll see that the unit comes out of the box with a dual redundant power supply, which is really cool. And there are 16 XLR TRS inputs. Each of these inputs features a Waves signature preamp, which is Waves' first in-house preamp design. These are the same preamps as in the Ionic stage boxes, and they offer uh, two impedance settings, as well as an HMX mode that uh, simulates some analog color if you want to have a different tonal option. There are 12 XLR outputs on the surface, as well as an AES input with sample rate conversion and two AES outputs. 
You'll also find eight USB ports and there are also four sound grid ports. And inside the uh, racks in the LV1 Classic setup, you can load up to 16 external devices via SoundGrid. So those could be uh, stage boxes or it could be another console if you want to I.O. share. You can even use consoles from another manufacturer providing you have a SoundGrid card installed. Just bear in mind that you'll just be uh, I.O. sharing. There's no gain sharing involved. Waves have also announced a brand new SoundGrid uh, card for Yamaha DM7 consoles. That's the WSG PY64, and that will be shipping in mid-May, I'm told. In terms of onboard DSP, the LB1 Classic does have its own built-in plug-in server that can be considered equivalent to, uh, or maybe a little faster than an Extreme C server. Uh, you can also mount three other servers uh, to be used for processing and for additional servers that can be used for redundancy. And you can spread the DSP load over those servers in the routing matrix. Every input and mix bus has eight plug-in slots, so there's a tremendous opportunity there to employ processing. And the LV1 Classic comes with 17 plugins with perpetual licenses uh, that include some of Wave's most popular titles in the live sound world, including Waves, Tune, Real Time, uh, H Delay, PSE, F6, and Truver. And there's also a built in 16 channel multi track recorder that records to USB media. So that's the Waves LV1 Classic, extremely fully featured, super robust system. Let's go and see what else we can find. Abbott is showing a pre-release version of Pro Tools here at NAB 2025 and the main new feature that they're beta testing right now is the speech to text feature. This is Abbott's first foray into incorporating AI capabilities into Pro Tools and the AI uh, analyzes audio and extracts a transcription out of it from speech, narration or vocals. Currently the feature supports up to 22 languages and you don't actually even have to know what language uh, your recorded audio is in. Uh, the AI capabilities will figure that out uh, depending on whether it's in the database of course. And the way that the feature works is that it creates a transcription lane on the timeline underneath the clip. So you can see the words under the clip. You can click on those words to navigate through the timeline if you want to uh, find alternate takes to make edits. And then there's a transcription window with the capability to search by word. So you can find other takes or other options for a certain word or phrase uh, in what's been recorded. Uh, you can do it very quickly and easily. And then from the transcription window, you can actually option click uh, you can select that phrase and option click on that and drag that up onto the timeline so it can save a lot of time with editing. So just to reiterate, this is a pre-release version that's being shown especially for the show where they're piloting this feature, uh, but I'm told that it should be included in the next update uh, which should be coming in the next few months. Well, that's a wrap for our audio roundup for NAB 2025. I'll see you back in New York. And until next time, this has been Andrew with B&H Pro Audio YouTube channel, reminding you to always remember audio.